Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Channel Legends video. Guys, we've got new fusion news. Uh, for those who just watched Call of the Arbiter, uh, I'm, I'm recording this before I've even seen it, but I know this dude is going to be in it. He's also the new fusion. I did mention this earlier in the week. I thought that he was going to be dropped in some sort of special uh, capacity or event. And turns out he's going to be the fusion champion. So we're going to check out Nut uh, in a second. I'm going to check out his kit. There's also a new uh, Forge Pass, so we'll go through that as well in this video. Let's check it out then. What's he looking like? He's looking, frankly, a bit bored. I'm not going to lie. He's looking a bit bored. Too much work on the Call of the Arbiter series. I mean, he is a legendary champion. I don't know if he's feeling that legendary. What are you saying? He just looks like he needs a smile or needs a bit of a frantic helmet or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's check out what his skills are like. Is this going to be... A must get or a must miss. And I'd say over the last few months, it's been some pretty easy skips or low level quality fusions. And, you know, we're due a good one. We're due a good one. Let's have a look. Nuts. Okay, then let's have a check out of this handsome chap. Uh, let's see what Raid have got to say about this before I give my view. I always like to kind of give the, the Raid's account of things before I try and say what I think they're going to do in the game. So they said here, we're beyond excited to share some exclusive info from Monday the 3rd of July. I feel like that's an unusual time for them to start a fusion, is it? Is it normally a Thursday? Anyway, from the 3rd of July, which is next week, next Monday, we're planning to launch a fusion event of a brand new champion you're going to see in Call of the Arbiter, which we've just seen. Um, and yeah, nuts going to be added. So legendary dwarf, spirit, affinity, defense-based champion. I feel like they're throwing in a lot more HP and defense-based champions at the moment, which is good. They're generally solid for newer players. As long as you understand, if you build attack on these dudes, it literally does nothing um, if you're new. So they've said here, if you need some help in Finite, he's a perfect match for both normal and hard. Um, what else are they talking about here? Got some free stuff going on. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at his kit. So Dwarven Might. Triple hitter, A1, we like it. Books to 100% chance, each hit, 100% chance of decreasing turn meter. If the, tur if the target's turn meter is not decreased, each hit has a chance of placing a, a freeze instead. So, that's, that's very clever. Well done, Raid. <laughs> that's very clever. So like they've said, whether it's hard or normal hard, uh, finite, we've now got multi-hitter, 100% chance to freeze. Three hits, each of them going to drop finite's turn meter. Irrelevant of whether it's against hard or normal. Also, Dark Fade, this is brilliant. You know, even stuff like Ice Golem, it's not bad. Um, any sort of boss where you want that turn meter drop is going to be very good. So, great, A1. That's a tick. I like it a lot already. This dude's already, even if I don't read anything else, this dude, for most people, if they want to get into finite hard, is a must get with that one skill. <laughs> Fury of the King attacks all enemies on a, on a three-turn cooldown here. Uh, books to 100% chance of placing decreased attack and weaken for two turns. Also puts counter-attack on him, which enables this triple hit to go off. That's a really cool skill as well. AoE drop attack and weaken, we like it. Good in a number of areas, whether it's general waves, whether it's Hydra, whether it's Ice Golem. Uh, decreased attack's the most important debuff from an AoE perspective in Ice Golem. Uh, and the fact that he's going to be counter-attacking as well is solid, especially considering he's a tank. He's defense-based. Damn, two good skills in a row. Uh, the A3 then, Blessed Bash, or Blessed Bash, triple hits, each hit uh, decreases the target's defense up to uh, by 3%, stacks to 30. So if you get 10 of these hits in across a long fight, 30% less defense. That's mind-blowing. That's mind-blowing. Like, that's clan boss craziness there. Good clan boss ability. Good clan boss ability. Self-counter-attack with a triple hit, which can uh, proc multiple giant slayer procs. Dropping the clan boss's defense by up to 30%. Wow. This is a serious dude. Each hit also heals him by 30% of the damage. Inbuilt life still set. It's a shame it's on a four turn, so that doesn't give you reliable inbuilt lifesteal set honestly but still pretty damn solid 
Uh, when counterattacking, deals 100% of damage instead of 75 for his passive. So you get full damage on his counterattack with this A1. And then accuracy in dungeons. This feels like a solid dude. We don't know his damage multipliers and all that type of stuff yet. But this feels like a really solid, solid fusion for 99.9% .9 of players. This is a must use for me. I think he's like up there. You know, he's going to be highly rated on the website. He's going to be someone that people use in a ton of content. I think for the average player that's coming through the game, you know, he, he can play in a lot of the early to mid game stuff well. And for the end game player, he's got enough speciality stuff about his kit that makes him really, really dangerous. So like that a lot. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Like, is this going to be someone who you're going for or not? Again, it depends what the fusion looks like. Uh, let me just check the wording of it. Is it fragment or normal fusion? They do say we're planning to launch a fusion event. So for those who are not familiar, um, skip past this a sec. Looks like it's going to be righteous gear for the few, uh, for the forge pass here. Righteous gear is up there as one of the best forge pass gears you can get. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, it's going to be a regular fusion. So I can't show you great because I don't have any left. But legendary at the top, four epics along the middle. And then 16 rares. They're normally a bit harder, okay? Because you have to collect the champions along the way. You have to ascend the champions. You have to level up and star up the champion. So generally, you need more food ready. You need a bit more prep in terms of dungeon keeps and all that type of stuff. I guess let me know, because this is going to be a big one. Let me know if you want to see an updated kind of like how to do this, how to get a fusion, basically. And uh, I'll do that if you need it. I could do that perhaps tomorrow if people, are, enough people are interested. Comment down below. But yeah, he is definitely going to be big. And I think he's going to be pretty cool. It does mean as well there's going to be more new champions coming in. They pretty much 100% of the time now, they do brand new champions alongside these fusions. So as soon as I get eyeballs on the epics and the rares that are coming in, I will let you know that as well. Let's have a quick look at this Forge Pass then. I think it's pretty much carbon copy of what we're used to now. Um, if you're free to play it and don't get have any interest in buying up the gold pass, it's still really good. Righteous gear is solid. Uh, when I first looked at this gear, I thought of it as just the best resistance gear in the game. It's actually also pretty guaranteed nailed on great speed gear as well. So, you know, it's only 2% less than speed set, uh, which was rightly pointed out to me when I talked about Righteous Gear when I was doing kind of upgrades on it. And yeah, it is a very good mid-game, early to mid-game set, as well as coming, as coming in as kind of end-game resistance gear. So Righteous Gear, definitely worth your time. You can hit level 50 as a free-to-play. I do it on my free-to-play when I'm pushing. Um, and I would say if you're someone who is a spender, the kind of $19.99 to get the bigger pack, is pretty good value in general. I think it's pretty good value. You get a lot more gear, you get glyphs in the mix, some um, um, boosted XP and stuff. It's kind of like whatever. But if you are a spender, I think it's actually pretty decent. So look, there you go, guys. Uh, they're raining in the soul stone packs. <sighs> Lots going on. Uh, but that one's a bit more positive than what we've seen recently. So yeah, good luck if you're going for nuts. And as I say, comment down below if you do want me to try and kind of push out a guide around how to deal with him. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.